Hey, happy Wednesday, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. I'm going to give you the latest update on what's going on in the tropics for the main part of the video for today. If you think hurricane season is over, think again, it is going all the way to the end of November. Matter of fact, we always talked about here how we had another anomaly coming in November before hurricane season is over. Now, I don't think this one is the one. I think it is going to come later on the same type of pattern. I'm going to show you in this video why I think that way. If you've never been here before, make sure you do subscribe. I am all year long. It is free to subscribe. Make sure you click the bell so you get notifications. I will give you the latest updates on the impacts on this as well. Now you see for this morning, we do have a flood watch going on in the South Central. And this is going to grow a little bit more. Plus we have our winter weather advisory in the purple, our winter storm warnings in the pink. This is for that first snowstorm that's coming through. We still have that second dip that's coming through as well. Now you can see according to National Weather Service, that this snow is coming in thick. But still turn into major snowfall as we go through tomorrow and Friday as well. Still bring anywhere from six inches still towards a foot towards North Dakota, Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, and a little bit of South Dakota as well. Not a whole bunch going further south than that. Normally this time of year, this is where our first snowstorm will hit anyway. But you can see with HRRR with the 12Z that these storms are still coming in the south for today. There is a little bit of a tornado threat as well as that goes all the way towards the upper Midwest as you go into tomorrow, bringing those storms. But these storms are going to train all through Texas and then go through the DFW as you go through later this afternoon and keep on going into the morning as well. This is going to last for a few days but today it looks like you have a chance for some tornadoes because we have a trough moving through and you are getting some shear on themselves as that trough starts digging in so you can see here with national weather service it's not a big risk not even for the hail but i am showing a little bit of a chance so just watch out for that your wind is not a big risk neither it's only five percent so far here's your cities where it could be some winds maybe in the high 40s and here's your chances for your tornadoes. It's not a wide area, it's just a little 2%. Just be aware of this transition as this trough comes in. Here's your cities that will be at risk so far. National Weather Service has as very isolated severe wind gusts and a brief tornado are possible across parts of north to south central Texas, mainly this afternoon through early this evening. Now, just in the next 24 to 36 hours is when you're going to get a lot of heavy rainfall for Texas going into Oklahoma, but it is going to start stretching more as it starts banding more and more. So far, one to two inches for northern Iowa, southeastern Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, northwestern michigan as well but starts going towards two to four plus inches of rainfall for eastern oklahoma and through texas i know y'all need rainfall but this will be a lot of flooding matter of fact you're in a moderate stage for today gets western arkansas with that as well and when you check the latest with the euro from 72 hours away and keep on going as we go through this pattern you see it does affect more of texas going towards houston this time more into Arkansas, more into Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, even southern Michigan this time. A little bit of western Pennsylvania, intercoastal northeast of New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. And a lot of tropical moisture is going to be rolling around as well. So you can see the updates on the flash flooding. You do have the marginal for today for southern Minnesota, western Wisconsin. But now you got this big slight risk going on all the way into Kansas and a moderate level risk going all the way through Texas and Oklahoma. This is for flash flooding. Of course, you're dry. So any extra rain is not going to be able to soak into the ground fast enough and it will flood. Plus, you have a lot of cement in those big cities. Now for tomorrow, it's going to transition for where the flash flooding is going to be heavier for Michigan and Wisconsin. It's going to keep going in the same path long enough to where it's going to do this and create flash flooding on the roads. Just be aware of that. Plus, you have the marginal down south. Now, as you go through Friday, you got a little marginal, but this is going to build. Because as you go through Saturday, now it's going to throw it right into the slight risk already. So if this is already a slight risk all the way by Saturday. Believe me, with this training going on, this could easily turn into a moderate level risk. So stay updated on your flash flooding. Because as you go through Sunday, you can see it stays there and it expands. So they do expect it to train in this area for a couple of days. Could easily turn into a moderate level risk later on. Still not showing any major winds coming out of the next 10 days as we go through this pattern. You can see as the cold front comes further and further to the south, you can see the winds that it does create some more in the Gulf. But a lot of winds going all the way towards the Bahamas, and those are 40s and 50s coming in. So it's bringing a big cold front. 
Now, it could get up towards 50s as you go through that Thursday. Now, this will be rain, so this will be potential damage and winds. The snow is going to be all northern Wyoming. You could get some blizzard warnings as well because you are getting that snow and higher elevations and a lot of high winds. Now, I do want to touch on your temperatures for just a moment. I'm not going to go through it a lot, but you do see the temperature change for the next 6, 10 days. Still confirming well below average temperatures coming all the way to the south. So if you want to see what's going on with temperatures, make sure you click on the video in the corner. That way you can see what I did post yesterday on that because I didn't go through detail for y'all. But I want to talk to you about what's going to happen in the tropics. Now, you can still see Tammy is still going away. You see all the ensembles agreeing that she will be forecasted to go away. But what's brewing up is coming up into our Caribbean, and it is going to be potentially later in November. Now, we're showing a chance for it now, so I'm going to show you why I believe that it is not going to happen. Now, if you've never been here before you've been, or you've been living under a rock, totally understandable. Quick update, you have some very cold Arctic air coming in for the next 8 to 14 days. All this light blue means you're in a slight risk of much below normal temperatures. All of this blue covering a lot of the U.S., is a moderate level risk for much below normal temperatures. And we actually had a high risk over here for the upper Midwest. But like I said, click on the video in the corner and you'll see exactly the timing of when these very cold temperatures and very cold wind chills will be passing through so you can prepare as best as possible. It will be going coast to coast with freezing temperatures, guys. So far, the worst of it is coming November 1st through November 7th for all that area I just showed you. And you can see when you look on your temperatures that the slight risk goes all the way from November 1st through November 2nd, even getting Florida and the Southeast on this. Now, I know a lot of people told me they wasn't getting any warnings about this coming towards the South or the Southeast. Trust me, it is coming, guys. Please watch the video up here in the corner. That way you can be best prepared. Because now i got to talk about the tropics. That's the main thing that I'm doing about this video. You can see as we go towards the beginning of November, we get a lot of favorable environment growing up in the Caribbean as we get that cool front coming on through. And then it starts forming up and grows into a nasty storm, potential tropical storm, potential hurricane, potential, potential going down towards a major hurricane in the Gulf and swinging by the southeast and the northeast because you can see the setup we're going into when you look at your vortices you still got this big high pressure spinning around here in the south you still have tammy up here being ripped apart it's gonna go east northeast while it still breaks off into an upper level low that swings in towards a western caribbean then we get some favorable environment and we get a trough guys right in the beginning of november we get this trough according to the gfs and it pulls this this trough creating this high ridge pulls this north instead of going to the west like it normally would go or in this direction around in high pressure that's normally what we see late october and november they come from the western caribbean going all the way into the atlantic instead we get this trough and this trough pulls this all the way in a big deep trough bring the ridge Pull is this potential hurricane potential major hurricane in swinging everything in that direction and so far, this is why I have an issue with that. If you've been here before, you know that this is your EPO, your East Pacific Oscillation. I've told you about this, all this cold air bringing this jet stream all the way to the south of the West Coast for this cold air coming. That's your jet stream, your EPO, your West Coast, your East Pacific Oscillation. Then you're going to go into the high ridge. Now, if you notice, in the beginning of November, there is a trough coming in on your EPO, your West Coast, just like what I just showed you on Vorticity. GFS is the red. You can see what Canadian and Euro is saying that there will not be that trough pulling that to the north, guys. When you look at the Canadian, you can see right here as it builds up for the beginning of November, it still builds up in that direction, but we get this big high pressure of cold air that comes all the way into the Gulf, just like I showed you with the Euro, and it keeps all that pushed away. Matter of fact, when you go with the update on the GFS, you can see that cold blast is pushing that all the way and it stays in the Caribbean. Now we need to watch out for this. Caribbean could see some stall effects, some big time flooding from this big group of disorganized to potentially organized thunderstorms that could grow into something while it just sits there and gets blocked potentially. And then it just go, goes out like we normally get for this part of our season. It goes from the Caribbean and gets pulled out into the Atlantic and goes away. 
Now, when you look at your ensemble members, when you look at your EPS, when you look at the chance with the Euro, it shows that by the time you go to October 30th, it does group up a chance for low pressures to gather. And by the time the first, there is something that could form up somewhere in the Caribbean and maybe go to the east, northeast, like we normally see this time of year. You can also see this on the GEFS. This is another set of your ensemble members showing the beginning of November. It could form up, but once again, go in that east, northeast pattern. And another set of members, your GEPS, there's so many guys. This right here also confirms time you go to end of October, begin of November, something could form up in multiple areas, but eventually we'll get either blocked by the high pressure or go out through the east, northeast. So we still need to watch it, but it is trending that it will go out through the east, northeast on this pattern. But it has a very small window to do that. It has to beat this cold front. So you can see right here with the Euro, when you check the chance for a tropical depression, that it starts coming that direction towards Cuba, towards the end of October, then it dissipates and it gets pulled out through this way. So it has a very small window to do that transition. Matter of fact, as you look right here, can we see a little bit further? You see in five, six days, it starts forming up and traveling through the West and the Caribbean. And as you go seven, eight days, that's when it has its chance. In seven days, it has to form up and maybe turn by the Bahamas, Cuba, maybe Southern Florida, probably gonna be East side loaded, would not affect Florida more than likely. Now, once it gets to November 1st and it gets a chance to go over here and make that turn, if it does not make it, the high pressure of cold air is gonna come in and block that area. You see, I could still turn by the second. Time to go to the third, it starts losing its chance to form up and it'll be gone. Also shown by your cyclone locations in 72 hours. You can see how you have Tammy more likely still going out to the east, northeast. Maybe upper level low, a little bit of energy could come off to the southwest. Maybe prohibit this just a little bit. And as it travels, you can see our other system potentially forming in the Caribbean. More than likely will remain very weak. Only one so far shows any strength, guys. So as you keep going towards five days now, you see it goes in that pattern starts getting a better chance of something to form up, maybe off the coast, but that's the one chance it has to form up. It gets better and better as it gets closer. So I don't think it's gonna form early. I think it will form late, if anything. Now, when you go by all the perturbed members, you can see the outcome by the time you get to November 2nd. A lot of places this storm system could be, many places. Now, if you go by right here, this is your control member, your more than likely outcome. You can see it'll take all the way to November 2nd because of that cold front of high pressure. And you can see as you keep on going, it still gets its chance to go further to the west. The high pressure moves further toward the east, leaving this window open a little bit for something to form up and turn that way as we go through the beginning of November. Now you can also see on your potential velocity anomaly with the Euro, as you look a little close range, that as we deal with all that lift, all that favorable environment that is going on right now, that we do have some around the 2nd of November in our region. Not a lot of lift. It'll be something weak, if anything, but that's his only chance to do something. Euro is still showing by the time you go towards the end of October. It tries to group, mostly it's going to be a group of disorganized thunderstorms as that goes to the west and a big high pressure of cold air coming in and maybe zing that out through the northeast. That's about it. To show all the factors, the GO satellite. The GO satellite confirms this as well. By the time you go towards the end of October, we get that favorable environment and it starts traveling through the west. It agrees with that cold front coming in very strong towards the south like National Weather Service has. A little bit weaker as you go towards the east right there and it does move to the east in time to have this system going west in the Caribbean, guys, by the GO satellite. That could either go further west if this high pressure stays there, if the high pressure keeps moving, it could go north. Because as you take a look at the long range with the Euro, you can see that little bit right here for November 2nd. You can see how once we get to the middle of November towards the 20th of November, we get more favorable environment, more lift, more chances for thunderstorms to grow as we go through the middle of November. And then it weakens down at the end of November, very beginning of December. Maybe have one last thing in the Caribbean, really, in December, probably. But that's going to be when I think it's going to happen when this time comes. I don't think this will be it. Even though the ghost satellite shows it, I think that will change. 
Thank you so much for your time. I do hope this helped you understand what is going on for the rest of our hurricane season. Remember, you've never been here before. Watch that video in the corner of the screen. That way you can see what's going on with these temperatures. Get a little better timing and what your impacts will be so you can be prepared. It's going to be a nasty blast. Now, real quick, in spirit of winter kicking in, I want to talk to you real quick on Job 37, 9 through 13. Out of the south cometh the whirlwind, and cold out of the north. By the breath of God, frost is given, and the breadth of the waters is straightened. Also by watering, he weareth the thick cloud, and scattereth his bright cloud. And it is turned round about by his counsels, that they may do whatsoever he commandeth them upon the face of the world in the earth. He causeth it to come, whether for correction, or for his land, or for mercy. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. I hope he always keeps you safe every single day of your life <laughs> forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody.